Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to fix black or blank screen in Windows 11 and Windows 10 laptops, or just about any laptop. Now by blank screen, I mean a screen that lights up but shows absolutely nothing on it. This could also be perceived as black screen because there's really no clear physical distinction between such blank screen and a black screen. Obviously, one could mistake this issue for a number of other issues that show similar signs. For instance, it might appear as if the laptop is booting up partially or refusing to boot up entirely or maybe frozen. Here, I'll be showing you a few ways to verify if your case matches the case I'm talking about here and of course how to troubleshoot and possibly resolve the issue. And now without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so first I will demonstrate the issue I'm having here to help you verify if your issue is related. Here I have this HP notebook. The user reported that it suddenly won't come on again. So when I press the power button, nothing shows up on the screen, pretty much nothing happens or at least nothing immediately noticeable happens with that i had to pay close attention to see if there is any sign of life on the laptop first was to check if any led either comes on or blinks when the power button is pressed and right off the bat i could see the power led on the side comes on and also the hdd activity led tends to blink intermittently this tells me that something could be going on inside the laptop but nothing shows up on the screen so that's an important sign to look out for. Next, I had to pay close attention to the screen to see if there is any change in intensity or different shades of black when I press the power button. Now, obviously, if you're able to do this in a dark room, it will be easier to see if the screen lights up or not. But if not, another way to check would be to just run your finger lightly across the screen and pay attention to the areas right around your finger to see if the screen shows some white lights around the edges of your finger. Here, if you pay close attention, you can see the white light around my finger when I run it lightly across the screen. Now, this shows clearly that my screen is lit, but no texts or images get to it. One other test you can perform to verify if this is indeed an issue with your screen would be to attach the laptop to an external display and try to boot it up. In that case, if your laptop has a functional operating system and the graphics drivers are already installed, then you should be able to see your windows booting up on the attached display. If that happens, then there is a high chance of the issue being with your laptop screen. Either the screen itself is defective or the flex cable is partially disconnected or maybe equally defective. Now this will obviously require a hardware approach, so if you are not comfortable disassembling your laptop, then you might need the help of a technician to proceed with the next step. Here I'll be disassembling the screen compartment so I can reset the flex cable or change the screen to see if that would resolve the issue. For this laptop, I first need to carefully remove the screen bezel. Now in your case, the bezel might be held in place by some screws. So check to ensure you unscrew such screws before removing the bezel. Here I also need to use a guitar pick to split away the adhesives between the bezel and the edges of the screen for easy removal. Now there are other tools that can be used for this, but I find the guitar pick quite versatile for this purpose. With the bezel removed, I can see that the hinges are held in place by some screws, so I also need to unscrew those. Afterwards, I can see that the hinges are further attached to the back cover by some adhesives, so I need to run a heat gun around the edges to dissolve the adhesives. Now you might not have to do all this in your case, but if you have to, you need to ensure the temperature of the heat gun is set right. A good rule of thumb would be to keep it at a temperature that is high enough that you are still able to continuously feel the heat on the screen with your hands. If it gets too hot to feel with your hands, then it's probably getting too hot for the screen and the back cover already, in which case you should reduce the temperature or pause the heating.
Now with careful heating and prying, I managed to separate the screen from the back cover and with that I'm now able to access the flex cable. Here as you can see, there has obviously been a previous work on this screen, possibly the screen has been replaced before and looking at it, I feel more positive that this is likely the case of a badly attached flex cable. So the first thing I did was to carefully remove the paper tape that was used to secure the flex cable. Reattach the connector more firmly and see if that resolves the issue. Now I won't apply another tape yet until I verify that this works. So I will first power up the laptop. Lo and behold, we now have our HP logo coming up on the screen. And the laptop seems to be booting up fine. Now to complete the fix, I will shut down the laptop. Double check that the flex cable is properly attached once again. Now in this case, the 30 pin connector head has a clip that holds it securely in place. So it's important to ensure that clip snaps tightly in place before applying a masking tape over it to ensure it's properly fastened. Then afterwards, you can either replace the adhesive that holds the screen to the back cover or like in my case, the adhesive is not badly damaged so I will just place the screen back against it firmly and cover the screen back with the screen bezel. Now if reattaching the screen connector doesn't work for you, then you might be having a defective screen or a broken flex cable, in which case you can consider replacing both components one after the other to see if that will resolve the issue in your case. For screen replacement, you can first test with another screen of same connector type even if the screen size is a bit different. That could save you the cost of purchasing another screen before confirming that the issue is indeed coming from a bad screen. And that is it for this tutorial, hope one of these was able to help you out. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and share with anyone you think might want to see. Drop us a comment if you have any questions or feedbacks. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications on future tech support videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.